try to share my screen first. I think everybody, uh, you can interrupt me, by the way, uh, any way you want. Uh, okay, so my talk is labeled uh, simple supergravity PP waves. As you see, this is our joint work, in fact, of uh, me and Professor Tekinderele, which is uh, basically one of our papers that got published a month ago or something. Okay, and it's concerning uh, a new formalism. Well, it's not new, it's very old, but it's never, uh, it's not been used uh, a lot before. So uh, let me present the outline of my talk. Okay. Uh, by the way, there are people wait in the waiting room. Can you, uh, can you just, yeah, thank you. Okay, uh, as you see, uh, I will give a small introduction, then present to you what are the complex quaternionic differential forms. Uh, then in this formalism, the field equations of supergravity and an exact solution, a new exact solution that we have derived uh, and some concluding remarks. Okay, uh, so let me start. Uh, the simple supergravity uh, theory is the locally supersymmetric generalization of Einstein's general theory of relativity. And in a perturbative approach um, to quantum gravity, the massless uh, spin two uh, graviton field that is determined by the metric tensor of spacetime is paired with a massless uh, uh, with a mass, massless spin three over two uh, gravitino field. Okay, so the classical, of course, the classical prediction of ordinary gravity over long distances is not expected uh, to get modified by supergravity because of the fermionic nature of uh, the gravitino, but the exchanges, uh, the force, the exchange forces can affect mainly, let's say, uh, the gravitino can affect mainly our short distance behavior. Okay, uh, if you are familiar, uh, simple supergravity theory um, is remarkable in several aspects, in several aspects. So I, I will not discuss them, there are a lot. Okay, um, let me, uh, I put some references here. So uh, to be a start and I will share with the audience if anyone is interested. So this is why you will see a lot of references around this talk. So uh, a family of, ex uh, of exact plane wave solutions of simple, simple gravity field equations in four dimensions uh, that include a subfamily of uh, non-gauge non generated solutions were given uh, by Eichelberg and Professor Dickin Um Then the odd Grassmann nature was uh, later worked on in references four and five, which I will share at the end of my talk. And uh, a generalization with non-vanishing gravi uh, gravitino energy momentum tensor density was made in the six references and some killing spinner uh, relevance was discussed uh, at, this, uh, at the seventh reference. Anyway, in all these papers, uh, the space-time metric was given by the classical Ehlers Kunt PP wave metric that's shown like this, it's 2 du dv, maybe you're familiar with it already, in Brinkmann coordinates, um, as you see, u, v, and the zeta, the zeta is the stereographic projection coordinate that's shown here. Uh, however, uh, and you may see, you may have seen it already in the literature, uh, the usual practice to study these interactions uh, with test masses, when test masses are involved, to characterize the, let's say, the transverse character of the wave, it, you need to change to uh, a suitable coordinate system, which are the Rosen coordinates, um, which are these, this transformation. And the PP wave metric uh, transforms into the uh, third equation, okay? provided that the first H given in the Brinkmann form satisfies this, and this can always be done. The issue here is uh, that 
before the motivation for the new introduction of the quaternionic complex quaternionic value differential form formalism is that uh, the, the transformation of the gravitino ansatz that we will make in Brinkman coordinates, the last, the ones that I showed you here, in these coordinates, to an expression in Rosen coordinates is highly non-trivial, okay? So why am I saying that? The explicit set of gamma matrices that we use generally in, for example, the Majorana realization that are used to express the gravitino ansatz in Brinkman coordinates, they need to be changed to a gamma matrix set that would still provide a Majorana realization, but now relative to the new orthonormal co-bases in the Rosen coordinates. Okay, I, I'm, uh, I hope I'm clear, but, and this is a not, this is not a straightforward task. Okay. You can I ask something? Um, yes. Uh, generally, when you do supergravity, you work with field binds, uh, and in the field bind formalism, the, I mean, of course, you need to still uh, perform the change of coordinate, but wouldn't it be rather straightforward to understand how these changes work in the field bind formalism? Um, I didn't, I did not get the question. Wouldn't it so, be what? So, so, okay, normally when you do GR, you yes. work with um, coordinate field expansion, binds. right? The tensors and coordinate, not, not the field binds. Mm -hmm. But when you want to introduce spinners into your uh, models, then you need to do some sort of uh, field bind uh, 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 machinery because to handle the spinner bundles, you mm -hmm. actually need that. <clears throat> so natural language in the case of supergravity tends to be not the coordinate or tensorial ones, but the field bind formalism, mm -hmm. right? With the, yeah, with some appro appropriate variation principle. Now, um, when, you, when you talk about these changes of coordinates, mm -hmm. I mean, the spinners are the same at the level of the field binds because you do not, I mean, like the signature and the dimension are the same, right? Yes, so, but the gamma, the gammas change when you need, you need to change the, um, how do, uh, you, you need to frame the gammas as well. And at the frames, they're the same, no? They're the flat gammas. Whereas yes. with the, but when you give me the metrics and you have already given me the metrics, I, I could just pull back to the coordinate gammas using the mm -hmm. feedback. So what's hard here, since you're giving me already the coordinates? I, I'm giving you, uh, okay, I'm giving you the coordinates, uh, but uh, normally uh, I will show you the, the equations the field equations that come with gammas uh, like gamma a e a all all these energy momentum tensors etc cetera, etc cetera, there um, how, how it's easier to make all the calculations with complex quaternionic differential forms okay this is the okay. main this is the main idea okay thank you without passing through this machinery without passing through the gammas etc cetera, etc cetera. Okay, without even even seeing the gammas, you will not even see one gamma in in, in this paper. Okay, that sounds nice. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, we start. What do we do? We start with a PP wave in Rosen coordinates. We go to the complex quaternionic valued exterior differential forms in four dimension, and uh, we express ev everything without indices, as you will see. Uh, so, first of all, let me introduce the complex quaternions, first of all. Probably a lot of you are familiar with already. Uh, an element of CH can be written as a li linear combination of the following elements with the complex unit I commutes with every element of the algebra. I square equals minus one and E1, E2, E3 are the quaternionic units denoted by E k uh, from the quaternion algebra, and they obey a commutation relation uh, of this kind. Uh, if you look closely, you can, uh, if you do the calculations, you can uh, easily identify E times, uh, sorry, I times E1, I times E2, respectively, with the usual Pauli matrices, sigma 1, sigma 3, which, are, which generate, as you know, the rotations, while the multiplication rules similarly demonstrate that they're sources of boosts. And if 
they may this may be proven to produce the Lorentz algebra. And if we we would get an element of SL2C, if we took a, le a real linear combination of these six items, multiply by the complex number i and exponentiate the whole thing. Okay, in my notations, I will define complex conjugation by a superscript star and quaternionic conjugation by an overbar. Okay, and their composition is defined by the dagger. Okay, so any element of SL2C, an element Q uh, from SL2C, are unit norm quaternions such that q q bar equals one and an explicit realization is given by the formula q equals exponential to this where a and b are unit q vectors and alpha and b real parameters now uh differential forms uh take any complex p form in it it may be written in terms of the elements of the quaternion algebra H by just this formula, where A1, A2, A3, A4 are complex valued P forms. Okay, we define, I'm giving you all, this is just a formalism. You may not remember all the formulas, but this is just to get you to the Einstein uh, Lagrangian and the equations that go from it from there. We define um, the following operators working on quaternions uh, as two times real part of q q plus q star imaginary part scalar part for sc vector part for q h hermitian part and anti-hermitian part as a aq okay and i will say that q is q scalar if the vector part of q is zero and q vector when the scalar part q is zero. Anti-Hermitian and Hermitian goes like this respectively. Now, I need to introduce you the while spinners, which are represented by two component complex vectors that can be represented in the algebra of complex quaternion by left ideals generated by L, let's say U1, U2, W1, W2, and the right ideals where the, the, on, the dotted you know the dotted and on dotted indices u1 u2 and the combination of w1 w2 con uh, corresponds to uh, undotted spinners and u1 w2 and u2 w1 the the right ideals correspond to the dotted spinners and you have them explicitly as this okay so when i say when i take a while spinner i can i can give it with a combination, the, the basis vectors will be U1 and U2 or W1 and W2 if I choose. Okay. Um, I need to give you just uh, so you can see the, the multiplication table of these uh, spin bases. Uh, you multiply a column, the first, the first row left by the first entry on the first column. And you get u1 u1 will give you square root of u1 etc etc why do we use this because we will express a lot of things with respect to the product of these um, some details uh, an sl2c transformation applied to these spinners uh, they can be used by the left and the right action of a unit quaternion q according to these four uh, formulas that, that i have given you for phi and psi, phi and psi, the undotted part for chi dot and psi dot dotted. Uh, now, in all our work, we used the Majorana spinner. Uh, it's a p, it's a spinner valued p form, where all four types of complex spinner p forms can be expressed in terms of two independent complex spinner p forms and imagine they are given by phi a and phi b you can express them by phi plus phi minus and if they are the dotted part phi dot plus and phi minus dot and in general 
Majorana spinner valued P form will satisfy uh, this formula. Phi dagger equals I times phi dot plus, which will come uh, in the Einstein equations. Okay, now a brief description of the space-time geometry uh, in the language of complex quaternion valued exterior differ differential forms. We consider the anti-hermitian co-frame one form that we denote as small e, which is equal to i e zero and the sum of from one to three of ek ek, in terms of which we can express the space-time metric as g, the real part of e e bar. Okay, and our usual tetrad components ea mu are defined by uh, the uh, the formula thirteen in a local coordinate chart, of course. Okay, an SL2C transformation converts the co frame according to this, to E, Q, E, Q dagger, and the following definitions of connection, torsion, and curvature forms over a space time, which will come in handy when uh, we'll derive the Einstein equations, are omega hat, T, the torsion, and R, the curvature form over the space time, can be expressed as this, as you see, with no indices around. Uh, of course, our usual omega k and r k, the components, uh, the components of the complex here, omega k and r k complex parts, are expressed of the connections. Sorry, the complex connections and uh, curvature one forms are expressed like this, with omega a b and which is equal to the anti-symmetric minus omega b a are the real components of the connection one forms. We choose the totally anti-symmetric uh, epsilon symbol. Uh, we raise and lower the frame indices, sorry, the indices by the metric eta a b. And uh, from above, from above, when I say from above, it's from this equation, 15, as you can see, t, is anti hermitian so the components of T0, T1, T2, T3 are real two forms, and omega and R hat, which are the connection and the curvature, uh, are SL2C valued. You can see them like this, expressed in quaternionic forms. Now, uh, I just gave you an, as extra the Bianchi identities that follow from the structure equations. The, they look like the equation 17 and 18. Uh, now I need to outline you the complex null basis that I will use to try to solve uh, in the Rosen space time, uh, the Gravitino equations. Okay, first of all, uh, the, re the relationship between the orthonormal and complex null co frames are fixed like this L and M, which makes me rewrite the metric as. Ln and L plus mm plus m bar m, sorry, m star, which is the complex conjugate of m. My orientation of space time is fixed as star one, which is my volume form E0, E1, E2, E3. And the star to the left denotes my Hodge dual defined on forms, the classical one. Uh, Okay, a star, I wrote this for myself, in fact, a star to the right of a simple, on the other hand, denotes the complex conjugation. Uh, we switch to a more convenient notation at this point with omega plus, omega zero, and omega minus, r plus, r zero, and r minus, which give me explicitly in terms of the null tetrads and the spinner basis elements, E, omega, and r. Okay, now you see uh, exactly uh, what we will need uh, for the field equations. Okay, now the simple supergravity field equation. Okay, the basic variables of this theory consist of a co-frame field E in which we have a Lorentzian metric like this. We have a Gravitino one form chi that is an odd Grassmann value that respects uh, ordering uh, Majorana spinner one form such that chi dagger is equal to minus i chi dot. 
uh, as you see, I will do connection one form is treated as independent variable. It's a first order formalism. Uh, I will go and vary the action where I will not give you all the details because it takes three pages to vary the action. But the Lagrangian of this density form is the density form form L, which is im SC means the imaginary scalar part of all of this. So the first term, as you see, is the Einstein Hilbert term. And the second and third term, as you see, are the uh, Rarita Schwinger uh, action density, Lagrangian density. Okay, uh, it is not difficult to verify that under infinitesimal local supersymmetry transformations given by these, uh, that the Lagrangian density uh, changes by a closed form. Okay. Um, now, the first order variation of the above equation, above action, yields the following simple supergravity field equations. So you see the first one is the Einstein equation, the second one is the Rita Schwinger equation, and the third one gives you the torsion in terms of the gravitino. Uh, it should be noted that there is more to the Einstein field equation that I gave you uh, in equation 27. In fact, it's not 29. Uh, in fact, minus two times uh, the Hermitian part of r hat, which e is equal to ig, which I denoted uh, g0 plus the sum of this. And this gives us our. Uh, familiar Einstein three forms, GA of equation 31. Now, similarly, we have uh, equation 32 that gives us the energy momentum tensor of the uh, gravitino, which is, uh, which, way, which may be seen with the 33rd equation, tau, which combines the uh, TAB wedge, uh, sorry, TAB star EB. Now we consider our space-time metric. Now at last, after all this formalism, in Rosen coordinates, where you have F, F and uh, big F and G, uh, the first ones that I defined you uh, at the beginning of, uh, of my presentation. We introduce to the complex null basis L and M like this. Uh, the corresponding Levi Civita connection one forms are determined from the usual Cartan structure equations, which are gamma zero, gamma minus, and gamma plus in terms of big F and the derivative of it and big G and its derivative. We take the gravitino uh, field uh, ansatz given by the while spinner valued one form uh, phi one of u times m times the u1 uh, basis vector. It's phi one, phi one of u is an odd Grassmann compl valued complex function of u. Uh, we have its Hermitian conjugate gravitino, which is uh, phi, uh, sorry, chi dagger. Okay, a few comments here. Uh, it is possible to introduce uh, time coordinates, time coordinates in terms of the null coordinates. And so that the metric functions depend only on you, describe progressive waves that move along the negative uh, z-axis. You know them as the left movers of left-handed. It is possible to make the, the same ansatz with and to describe the gravitino by taking the other component basis, which is U2, and everything moves, uh, everything depends on V, and we could have taken the other way around, the other ansatz, which is phi two of V, M star times U2. Okay, but in what follows, we will only deal with left movers. From the ansatz, we derive the torsion two forms. Uh, then, explicitly the contortion after a lot of calculations, the contortion one forms, which are determined as follows. With all these expressions, there when all, all these expressions are put in the Rarita-Schwinger equation, we see that 
it is only satisfied. So what, which equation is satisfied? Let's go back, I can show you. Equation 28 is only satisfied in this case for F equals big F equals big G of our space time. Okay, up, of course, valid to an arbitrary multiplicative constant that may be okay, set to equal to equal unit. Then we calculate the remaining components in order to go to the Einstein equations, which will components of the energy momentum tensor. They look uh, as ugly like this. Uh, it should be remarked that we have uh, norm squared times of phi one times phi one, which is equal to this. It vanishes due to the odd Grassmann nature of the gravitino field. Uh, then we move on to the field equations. Now we need to solve them. Okay, then we obtain, uh, this is the Einstein equation. The Einstein equations, r hat which E equals to, uh, which is binding the gravitino and uh, the background EP wave background. And we have uh, the energy momentum tensor that looks like equation 46. Okay, first of all, it was difficult to solve this since you see there are eyes lying around, complex eyes. Uh, we considered a polar decomposition as phi one of u, which is the norm of phi one times exponential of alpha u. And of course, this is this describes for an arbitrary phase function, the gravitino field describes a progressive wave with a modulated amplitude. And if we choose a particular choice, alpha u plus or minus ku, it corresponds to a gravitino plane wave with a wave number k. Okay, very classical stuff. But the, the polar decomposition is not trivial, which helps us solve the Einstein equation. And when we do the polar decomposition, the, the, the equation and make this assumption, where eta is a complex odd Grassmann constant, the Einstein equations provided uh, are satisfied, provided the following second order differential equation is solved, which is a simple, which binds the metric functions and the gravitino. And we gave a non-trivial, for example, at this point, we gave a non-trivial solution of uh, the background pp wave and alpha of u which is let me go back alpha of u is phi one of u the norm times the phase part of the gravitino uh, <coughs> we find the energy moment we also we have also calculated the energy momentum tensor of the gravitino to show that it is not vanishing okay and uh, the only non-zero components are T00 and T33, which look like this, okay? Uh, what can I say more? Now, before going to, before uh, giving you all the references, et cetera, for those, uh, for those who are interested, we, we constructed, in fact, uh, a class of exact, with these, we constructed a class of uh, EP wave solutions of super, simple supergravity in the Rosen coordinates. And uh, so the, the corresponding, of course, as I told you, it takes uh, the corresponding transformation of the gravitino form, one form is rather involved and hasn't been worked out explicitly before. But in this paper, we start instead directly with the PP wave metric in the Rosen coordinates and with a suitable and that's the gravitino one form we solved uh, the simple supergravity field equations exactly, okay? So this is why this technique is so powerful. As you see, we have not even used any gamma matrices or anything uh, with all these calculations. Uh, nevertheless, um, even if um, the Rarita Schwinger equation that I showed you, which is E bar wedge D chi equals zero, uh, put uh, our metric functions uh, constrained, in, restricted, in fact, our metric functions of space-time f equal to g. Uh, this is uh, this is very common in when considering a collision of waves, uh, 
impulsive gravitational waves. And, uh, yeah, nevertheless, uh, a family of, let's say, the exact solutions. Uh, they, this is a very powerful technique to find an exact solution. So uh, this was just, and this paper was done just to illustrate how powerful this uh, mechanism are. The mechanism is, sorry. Okay, I think I'm uh, in front of my schedule, but uh, I can end my talk here. And for those interested, I may share if you want the references at some point. So thank you for listening. And first of all, thank you for uh, inviting me uh, to this talk. I want to thank the organizers because they uh, they invited me personally, and this makes me happy. Thank you. Thank you, Jorga. Thank you. Uh, it was a very nice talk. And uh, so, do we have any questions from the audience? I could ask some. Uh, Kerem, if you want to ask. Me. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, so thank you for this talk, your growth. I, I would like to ask some questions first of all. Yes. Now, since you're finding an exact solution to, if I'm not understanding correctly, um, finding solutions to Einstein's equations is hard, right? You need lots of symmetries or, I mean, for exact solutions. Mm -hmm. And for supergravity, I think it is even harder. Um, exactly, very hard. And using these um, nice norm division algebra properties, mm -hmm. you are able to circumvent lots of maybe calculational difficulties along the way. I think that is this, right? This is what yes, you are advocating. Yes, exactly, yeah. Okay, now my real questions. Mm -hmm. um, how do you think should one interpret the solution? Right, because you have spinners and I mean like GR is normally classical, but you have here some spinners. Is this like a quasi-classical solution? W what is the interpretation or how should I think about the solution? Um, and my second one is actually, uh, is your energy momentum tensor that you defined way earlier, uh, the TAB components, uh, yes. are they automatically symmetric to begin with? Because your solution turns out to be symmetrical. From that form, I cannot see immediately. Yes, and I the... do not expect it to be. Uh, they are since we are in supergravity with uh, the torsion, it, they are symmetric. Let me start by the second one. Since uh, supergravity field equations, you have three equations: one Einstein to the equal to the energy momentum tensor. Then separately, you have the Rita Schwinger equation, and which comes uh, you you come with the torsion part, which binds the torsion and uh, the gravitino. Okay. First of all, when we saw, uh, when we make the ansatz, we go back. Sorry, when you solve this, how it is solved? Normally, you solve. Uh, you try to solve first your Rarita Schwinger equation. Okay. Then you need uh, you need to when you solve with this simple ansatz, you go back and derive the torsion that comes from it, and then resolve the Rarita Schwinger equation. You recheck it. And you go back to the Einstein to the Einstein equations and solve there exactly. I I, I don't I, I'm not sure if I'm being clear or not. And the tor the torsion part gives you. Yes, please ask me uh, your question. Okay, thank you. Uh, since there is torsion, why would the Einstein field equations would be symmetric? The that was my confusion. Okay, the, uh, the, by construction, the, the Einstein tensor uh, is symmetric. For a Levi-Civita connection that you start with. Yes, okay. Here there's a torsion yes. field model. Torsion. Right? Yes, you have the, the torsion part. Then you introduce it again in the, in the equation. This is why the, the, the right-hand side uh, will, uh, will help for the symmetry of it. Okay, uh, you also told me, okay, I will ask one last question real quick. Uh, you also told us that this is not a trivial solution. Was this in the sense that um, it's you not cannot super, find it's an not super gauge, gauge generated? This, this is why I, I mean, 
So there is no classical solution corresponding to this, in a sense. Or, yeah, this is not in the ga any gauge, super gauge Evet, of any evet. this is solution. not locally super gauge generated. This is what I meant. How do you show this um, for this solution? Uh, okay, the customary approach to this is uh, to consider a family of exact solution in the bosonic sector. Okay? Yes. Of the coupled field equations with a certain group of, uh, of uh, isometries. Uh, then, given the isometry generators, one solves the killing spinners in the background, in the classical mm -hmm. background. Um, thus, you have a subfamily of exact bosonic solutions, which are made locally supersymmetric and provides uh, an equivalent class of vacuum solutions. So we call and we call these not super um, locally super gauge generators. Then, uh, but since and we try to solve, we try to find those that are not super gate generated. So you look at the classical solution that you get from here for GR only, and then you look at all, no, that is, but how do you make, so, okay, maybe I will ask this to you later then, uh, because okay. this will keep on going, I think. Okay. <laughs> and we could discuss this later. Okay, sure, of course. But sure. thank you for the talk and the answers. Kerem, go ahead, please. Okay. Hello, Yorgo. Thank you again. Uh, I want to ask about this assumption 48. Uh, yes. I, first of all, I didn't understand the role of this eta. Uh, why it's not just a normal constant, let me say it's a complex or Grassmann constant. What's the role of eta being such a... Okay, since confusing uh, constant, I yes, the constant is odd Grassmann because I when I let me go back just a second. The assumption, uh, the, the, this assumption to divide by big F of u is in order for the, for to solve the equations. Okay, this is the trick that we use to solve. It, they they were canceling very nicely. This is why we chose this uh, mm -hmm. the norm of phi one of u to be equal to eta divided by big F of u. The eta, the norm, um, the norm of eta one, sorry, the norm of eta, it comes from, uh, if I take, look at equation 47, if I take phi one of u and I want it to be uh, odd Grassmann, I need, if I set exponential i alpha u, I need to put, uh, to keep the odd Grassmann nature of it, I need to put a constant. So when I calculate phi, phi star, or phi one, phi one square, all of this, so I can I can keep track of the grading. If okay. it's not odd Grassmann, like, if I just put a, a constant. Okay, sort of like to make the transformation rules. Yeah, right. uh, yes, exactly, okay. exactly. Okay. To keep the transformation rules of the grading of the odd Grassmann uh, term. Okay, I, I think. Are there any other questions? Uh, no, I guess. Okay, I can ask a question. So I have seen the quaternic algebras in the context of Clifford algebra, like we can about like some pin groups and spin groups related to this mm -hmm. Clifford algebra and complex quatern. So like, are there any Clifford algebra correspondence for the complex quaternions? Like, the, are there any like representations for them? Okay, it's uh, it's the Clifford one three, I think. I'm not sure, but uh, it, it will it should be Clifford one three, but it's only in four dimensions. So in order to go in higher dimensions, you need a little of the big spin groups, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I, I did not go there, by the way. So, so is, this is in the four dimensions, right? Yes, of course, and it works only on four dimensions. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, You're welcome. So, any other questions? Uh, okay. So let's talk Jorge again for this. Very nice talk. It was very like illuminating for me, <laughs> and uh, we're gonna be back in ten minutes. Thank with you. Talk. Yeah. Thank you, Orga. Thank you all for. Thank for you, Orga.